Hello and welcome back. And I don't know about you guys, but if you've been keeping an eye on the cost of electricity these days, it's an absolute joke how much we are paying for every single watt going into our homes or offices. And I think a number of you that are stepping away from streaming platforms, your Amazon Primes, your Netflix, your Disney Plus, your whatever, are moving towards your own multimedia server, utilizing things like this, Synology NASIs. I think a number of you are right to be concerned about the cost of running these devices. And in more recent times when we've seen users moving away from clunky hard drives, which although if you great capacity also consume a little bit more power when in operation a number of you have been wondering about the versatility and the benefits of utilizing NAS systems that run on SSDs SSDs that require less power and give you higher performance and ultimately meaning you can get the job done that little bit quicker and that's what today's video is about we have got the Synology DS423 plus a transcoding enabled NAS system and we populated it in two different scenarios we've pop fully populated it with Toshiba 8 TB hard drives and in another scenario later on we populated that same NAS again powered by an integrated graphics CPU and upgraded memory to 6 gig more on that later and populated it with these Kingston DC 600M SSDs and we're doing 11 different Plex tests in the background and we'll summarize them in just a moment and throughout the course of these tests we are going to be looking at two things one, how much system utilization, primarily the CPU, is being utilized during the course of playing back these files, both with transcoding and conversions and in native playback. And we're going to be looking at how much power these are consuming right the way down to the watt and ultimately figure out just how much better off or perhaps worse off you are by spending a little bit extra on SSDs inside your Plex Media Server NAS. And that's really it for the course of this video. But one click disclaimer straight off the bat. And that disclaimer is quite simple. There's going to be a number of you watching this video. And if I have to go by the comments of my other videos, people are going to say, transcoding is pointless. Why are you converting? What is the point of converting and transcoding? And you're right. If you use a NAS system with native playback, that is when the file remains unchanged at the destination client device, your TV, your console, your phone, whatever, I agree. The improvements and advantages of conversion transcoding are negligible, however. One, you may have particularly dense media in 4K or 8K media and playing it back on a device that doesn't support those multimedia formats, doesn't support that resolution, doesn't support those compression techniques, how movies get changed and reshaped from the cinema screen to the comfort of your living room. And therefore, there are lots of different users that don't even realize that they even need or are using conversion transcoding in the background. So we have to factor those into these tests. And unsurprisingly, conversion and transcoding require more power to get the job done, uh, go, they consume a little bit more electricity. So let's crack on with the results of our testing with 1080p, 4K, and even 8K multimedia in a hard drive equipped NAS and an SSD equipped NAS. Let's go. Right, so immediately taking a close look at those power consumption numbers, even on this most casual of native playback tests, it becomes immediately apparent just how much power difference there is running those four hard drives versus that of the SSDs on the left hand side there. I started off the first few tests in this series going through different kinds of, I would argue, quite deep 1080p media, but using native playback. So no transcoding, uh, both of these systems, both of which, you know, the DS423 there, uh, in both cases, the J14125 uh, CPU, in both cases, we were playing back different kinds of 1080p media starting from 3 megabits per second going into 30 megabits per second and then later one or later 100 megabits per second and in all three occasions we could see that the native playback was pretty much the same in terms of the frame rate in terms of the output and indeed in terms of the cpu utilization but that extra additional power utilization because of the hard drives ended with us utilizing, you know, twice as much or three times as much, I should say, power using the hard drives than we saw on the SSDs, regardless of whether we were utilizing denser media or slightly more shallow media. And, you know, for a lot of users, that is going to be a defining point. I know there are going to be some of you watching this wondering, you're using the jellyfish files that are 30 seconds each. The peak power consumption is going to be during that initial encoding uh, of the media being presented as it's buffed through, and I agree with you on that. But still, nonetheless, this is still a similar situation being undergone for both of these hard drive and SSD RAID systems for Plex, and in both occasions, the hard drives were just clearly using that bit more. 
Moving over to 4K media, this would persist. Obviously, we're using a system here with integrated graphics, so had we gone down the road of using transcoding on conversions to convert H.265 into H.264 or whatever, um, that would have you know played its part on the system resources, but at least when it comes to the storage media there, we still didn't see any you know, huge difference there in terms of the CPU utilization and the hard drive using more. But what I think is another interesting point there as we move through these different 4K HEVC files to touch on is the fact that the SSDs didn't present the advantage that a number of us would have liked to have seen in a Plex Media server. What do I mean by that? Well, when we're running the multimedia via the SSD media, we didn't see the CPU having to do less work because the CPU wasn't that taxed in the first place. Yes, of course, we're seeing lesser power consumption when we were utilizing SSDs over hard drives, but at the same time, any benefits we thought for native playback using SSDs when it comes to the actual playback of the multimedia and resources in the system was negligible next to zero. So anyone that tells you that using SSD media for native playback on a NAS system it won't result in any improved file handling from what we're seeing here because what we're seeing here is both systems, the power consumption remains the same across all the different file types, clearly indicating that it didn't matter. And uh, with regards to uh, SSD or hard drives, that was about the targeted power of the system. But what about if we move away from the system hardware for native playback and we make our way into transcoding? Here you can see on screen we took a 30 megabits per second 4K file and we transcoded that file down to 240p. And that was on both systems there. And when we did convert them both down to that lesser format, we can see that now the CPU inside the SSD NAS it's no longer three times the power consumption. Now we're getting closer to half and half, 50%. And therefore, the SSD media, once again, was not really providing any kind of inherent performance benefit. Now, as you can see, it's dropped down at points in power consumption, but that's only, as you can see from the dark orange on the playback of the multimedia files on screen, just because buffering had concluded. So... Any dip or disparity between the SSD media and hard drive media we're seeing during the transcoding was largely undermined because as soon as the buffering was finished because it became very clear that the reason there was any dip in power consumption being consumed was just because the task at hand had been completed. Now again, maybe the SSDs gave a bit of an edge there, but not really enough that I would point out and say was any meaningful difference. Which brings me to what I thought of as some of my densest files that I have in 4K. First up, the 200 megabits per second 4K file, we transcoded that down to just 160p and in, you know, a horrendous downgrade in multimedia there. And as you can see, the, you know, 3 to 1 that we saw from hard drive versus SSD closed once again. Of course, when buffering concludes, we can see that disparity close in a bit, but... The hard drive's media is clearly utilizing somewhere in the region of 20 to 22 watts more on average than that of the SSD populated NAS system there. And that continued when we moved into the 400 megabits per second file, which is you know twice the density, 1.4 gigabytes per second file size for a 30 second file. And again, we're not really seeing as much of that three to one although i will say looking at this that 17 versus 46 power consumption for the 400 megabits per second file i think that is one area where we can say that the ssd media in its higher delivery of that larger file to maintain that bit rate really did help and finally, I went on to 8K media, ultimately pushing through the densest, highest resolution media we could utilize for these tests to see if SSDs would open the floodgates to users that want to have an 8K ready Plex NAS, but didn't really have the hardware, but could get hold of the media. And I'll say, luckily, because I was utilizing an 8K ready client performance machine, we were able to play back these files natively. And as you can see, at 160 megabits per second 8K, an HEVC file, the disparity between these two platforms here, again, was around about 20 to 25 watts fluctuating there all the way along. So the SSD media, again, does allow, at least by what I'm seeing here on screen, allow the denser and more complex multimedia with a higher bit rate to be enjoyed a little bit more than it is on the hard drives. And it means not only are you getting that media pushed through successfully, uh, or at least uh, uh, quicker, then at the very least you can say that the power consumption for that insanely dense media 
definitely tapered off and was a great deal more acceptable on the SSD populated Plex Media Server NAS than we could see on a hard drive populated NAS. And a lot of that is to do with just the chief delivery of those individual hard drives in that RAID array. You know, each drive is going to give around 250 to 280 megabytes per second. And if you're lucky in a RAID 5 environment, you might hit six to 700 megs for file types like these, whereas the SSDs could easily fully saturate that one um, gigabyte or, or 1000 megabytes per second connection if they chose. And finally, closing out on transcoding, we went ahead and transcoded an 8K 30 megabits per second file down to 1080p at 8 megabits per uh, second bit right there. And as you can see, the difference between them, we're approaching that half-half uh, limit as well. One thing I've just became true and truer throughout these tests, and I'm sorry to be repetitious, was that, that the density of the media, as it increased, be it in resolution, bit rate, or file weight, that's when the SSDs were able to clack, crack their knuckles and get the job done better. That lower latency really paid off. So ultimately, if you are looking at populating a Plex NAS with SSDs or hard drives, you should be doing SSDs if your media is particularly dense, because that additional delivery flow will help. It was never going to be a tremendous surprise that a NAS running on SSDs was going to consume less power. The media itself consumes less power getting the job done, and because it delivers the media quickly to the system, there is an argument to be made that the overhead that the CPU and the system has to process that data is assisted greatly by the SSD media inside uh, pushing that media to it as quick as possible in the most efficient method possible. But there's still no avoiding that despite the increased power cost of a NAS running on hard drives, whether it is in idle power consumption or peak power consumption, that the cost of SSDs is higher. Now, some of you may have already typed in the comments before the end of this video, why did I not use M2 NVMe media on this system, why didn't I gauge what the cost difference in terms of power consumption and therefore the lecky bill between M2 NVMe media and hard drives? And quite simply, because the price difference between M.2 media and hard drive media is still pretty substantial, somewhere between three to five times the cost per terabyte. However, when it comes to SATA 2.5 inch media, which you can get now in between four and eight TB, the price difference has actually come down quite significantly in the years since solid state drives first came to market some 12 to 15 years ago commercially. And now hard drives only cost about two, two and a half times that of its SATA alternative in SATA drive form or SATA 3 for all SATA 6 gigabit. And therefore, it actually draws those parallels quite neatly together. Ultimately, if you are a user that is going to be reliant on conversion and transcoding, or you are someone who is going to be streaming to devices which will benefit greatly from reduced size media, your mobile phones, your tablets, or your whatever. Or more importantly, if you are a user that's already starting to build up a healthy, heavy 4K media collection and 8K media collection, I do think you are the user that will see the uh, power consumption benefits and therefore the cost benefits of opting for an SSD equipped Plex Media Server now system. But the rest of you, I'm not sure you will see the benefits of that um, investment in SSD media in your Plex NAS within the next five to seven years. And for you guys, the rest of you, I think hard drives are still going to be the best bet for your needs. But this has been SSD versus hard drives and power consumption in a Plex Media Server now. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is actually part one in a three part series where we'll be looking a lot more at power consumption within NAS systems in different user case scenarios. So if you've got any suggestions you want to see for future parts in this series, bung it in the comments below. But thank you so much for watching. If you need free advice or support, you've got a free advice section over on NAS Compares, you've got the Discord, you've got Ask.NAS Compares, the forum, and of course you can take advantage of the expediated support options and hire myself or Eddie for a Zoom consultation via Ko-Fi and Patreon. Other than that, have yourselves a fantastic week.